This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Hey, welcome back. Hope you had a great holiday weekend. It's time for Silver and Black today at Odyssey Sports Original Podcast covering the Las Vegas Raiders. Thanks for being with us today. Hope you're having a good time. Do us a favor. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your audio. Don't forget to rate and uh, leave a review for the podcast wherever you listen to. We certainly appreciate it. Love it or hate it. We're good with both. Doesn't matter. Uh, and just let us know what you think. It's always good to hear from everybody out there, and, and we appreciate it very much. Today, we're going to get into a conversation about the Raiders, their schedule, their expected results, the rest of the AFC, and we're going to get to your calls in the third segment as part of the Raider Nation mailbag, where we take your voicemails and text messages. Also, at the beginning of the mailbag segment, make sure you stick around we got a big announcement from Mo who's coming up too. She, no, he's not going into film, but we'll get into it in a second. I am Scott Branson, your host, along with my co-host. That is Mr. Mo Moten. He is a senior NFL writer over at Bleacher Report. He's the Raiders columnist at sportsnot.com, where you can catch my work as well. You can also find Mo on select days over on TNT Sports, where he does his TV spots and other things so we'll always remind you what's going on there as well again if you're watching us on youtube wherever you're watching us we appreciate that very much and by the way too uh just a shout out to our great friends over at bet us yes bet us sponsoring us this year we appreciate what they've done and if you haven't gone over to see them check out the link below in the description and in the first comment of this video and uh, check out a special offer for you there, too, from our friends at BetUS. You cannot beat them if you're betting football this year. So we appreciate that very much. All right, Mo, uh, we are finally, we got past Labor Day, which means it's now the season. We're, 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 we have official injury reports, all the stuff that has to happen as the Raiders and the rest of the NFL lead up to the kickoff of the season, which, of course, is Thursday night with the Ravens and the Chiefs, what game I'm really looking forward to watching. But uh, this is it, man. We're finally here. Our summers are over. Some of you out there might have a little bit extra time uh, until after maybe next week or whatever, but not us. We're ready. We're geared up for the season. And well, we're going to talk about how the Raiders may do this season. But um, I'll tell you what, it was a great first weekend of college football. I know a lot of Raider fans are watching some quarterbacks out there and we are too. Your guy Cam Ward had a great day. Uh, and of course, we had a couple other guys that we'll discuss at some point down the line. But uh, it's it's time, man. It's time to kick off the season. I'm ready. Uh came from my small, short darkness retreat. <laughs> <laughs> As you say, with a big announcement to make, I laid out my schedule for my audience on Monday. I'm ready to go. I, I, yes. I've had all the rest that I can get. I'm, I'm just ready for some football, Scott. I am too. It's it's especially when it comes to the Raiders because we're gonna and we're gonna do some prognosticating today, which I know some people are like. Well, you're just guessing. Yes, we are. That's why I love the fact that come Sunday we will talk about results. Yes, resume on the grass, Mr. Pierce. I love it. I can't wait. And uh, we get to talk about some real football. By the way, we will of course be back on Thursday and then Sunday we'll have our live show. Myself and uh, Murph from Raiders Fan Raider. He's a voice of the fan. After each game that we do the live, and sometimes Mo jumps in if he gets done with his lives. Which if you follow Mo as well, right after the game he does his Bleacher Report live, and then right about after that is when we come on and do a show here. Uh, and he joins us occasionally when he's got time, if he doesn't have to write something right away, which he usually does. But hey, just uh, stay tuned and we will tweet out all those uh, uh, dates and times and all that kind of stuff. If it's Mo, if it's us, doesn't matter. Either way, it'll be there for you. All right, Mo, we're going to jump in now. And this is where people will either love us or hate us. They'll tell us we're either too positive or too negative. And uh, we're going to go through this schedule again with the Raiders uh, and and talk about um, what it looks like. It's not an easy schedule. There's certain times in the schedule where they have, I think, more opportunity, other times where it's very difficult. And um, you gave a prediction way back when, when the schedule first came out. So we're going to see if you stay with that. You were at seven and 10, if I'm correct, right? Eight and nine. Eight and nine, excuse me. Eight and nine, eight and nine. Mo was at eight and nine. I have not done one yet, so this is my first one. So we're going to go through that and talk about the Raiders schedule, um, and uh, we'll start off. But before we do that, Mo, again, this is all assuming what we know today. What we know about the other teams, the other teams can have injuries. They could 
be worse than you thought they were going to be. The Raiders could be better. Gardner Minshew could have like a storybook Hollywood year or Aiden O'Connell. You, you, we don't know. We're just going off of what we've seen in preseason, what we know these teams' strengths and weaknesses to be. Right, Mo? Anything to add to that as the setup? Nothing to add other than um, if you're overly optimistic, you might want to turn down your speaker a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Murph. Time to tune out, brother. Uh, no, but we'll – yeah. And, and again – this is not meant to depress you because I'm excited about the Raiders season. And again, anybody who does a Raiders show, and if you think they're overly negative, that's not good. Like, we don't want the Raiders not to be very good because, it's frankly, it's better for us. If you look at any kind of content creator, if they're covering a subject, uh, it's better. You could say if the Raiders were absolutely awful, yeah, that might benefit you a little bit, but only for a short time. People get sick of negativity and they want to jump out. So we want the Raiders to do well. Right. We don't root here on the show, but we want them to do well because that's better for everybody involved, including us. So just let me say that up front. All right. So let's dive into this moment. Of course, we talked about this weekend uh, with the Raiders coming up and um, the first week of the season. Let me put this up so we can be on screen with the folks here uh, is is the Chargers. So the Raiders go down to their summer home, as you guys all call it, or their vacation home, whatever you want to call it, uh, to face the Chargers in a 105 p.m. game uh, on the Pacific Coast. And this one is interesting. You know, the Raiders and the Chargers, obviously the big embarrassment uh, that really helped uh, their current GM, Tom Telesco, and the coach get fired down there is now the last memory the Chargers have had. So Jim Harbaugh now in charge. The, the Chargers have lost quite a bit. They still have a pretty good defense, I think, in spots. Of course, Khalil Max up there. Joey Bosa's up there. It's going to be a lot for the uh, Raiders offensive line to handle, but we'll see how that goes. But overall, uh, I've said it all along, so it won't be any surprise that I believe that the Raiders have an edge here, especially early. We talked about Aiden O'Connell because he played well against them. I think Gardner Minshew will have similar success. So when I look at this, Mo, I, I give this a win. I think the Raiders start off 2024 with a win. I don't know how close it would be. It's not going to be a 63-point no. shellacking again. I don't think that happens. But I do think that the Raiders will go down there and win their first their opening game before they got ahead on the road uh, in week two. Yeah, I said this on my Bleach Report live. I've said this uh, through over the past month that I think the Raiders are going to come out and win this game. I know Chargers are going to have revenge on their minds. I know a mm -hmm. lot of people make fun of the Chargers because it's not really a home game for them. But there was ever a time for Chargers fans to come out with Jim Har with the Jim Harbaugh buzz. Justin Herbert is playing. There's new energy there. I expect it to be more Chargers fans than a lot of people may expect. Still mostly a Raiders crowd. Uh, but I do think that a lot of new around Justin Herbert, their receivers aren't great. Josh Palmer, who I really like, is their mm -hmm. probably their best wide receiver. Len McConkey is expected to be their lead target guy, but he's still a rookie. A uh, lot has to gel on the Chargers side. The Raiders have some continuity on the defensive side of the ball. I think they pull out this victory as well. Yeah, and I'm interested to see because I think uh, I think you'll see Blake Quorum too, uh, the rookie, of course, from Michigan and won the national championship, right? Um, the Rams. I'm sorry, the Rams. Wow, I'm jumping ahead games. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Wake up. Los Angeles team. Same building, <laughs> different team. I love this too because when you misspeak, we get the comment. Guy doesn't even know what team he's on. <laughs> That's what I did. I just, too much football on the mind. But, yes, yeah, so the Raiders, uh, that's later in the season. See, I got my notes in front of me, and I'm looking ahead too far. Uh, so we go through that, and I and, and I just think that I think that this game favors them. I think you're talking about a new system. Yes, the Raiders have a new offensive system, but you have a lot of veteran players there who are, who are at least around, have played together. You look at the Charger team. Yes, they have veterans too. And, and Herbert, I don't think Herbert's as healthy as people think he is. I think that's part of the reason they traded for Taylor Heineke. And I do think uh, that we'll find out more because we're going to have on Wednesday, or excuse me, Thursday, we're going to have our good friend Ryan Dyrud from the LA Football Network who covers the Chargers as well to talk about them and talk about where they're at and what he thinks. But uh, but I got that down as a win. So you and I agree on that one, a win in Los Angeles. Week two, not as easy, Mo. Got to go all the way to Baltimore and face the Ravens who – a lot of people, again, it always seems like the Ravens, you know, people love the Ravens every single year because of Lamar Jackson. Of course, that Ravens defense, they've improved uh, from a wide receiver. Zay Flowers had a nice year last year. I really like that kid as well. I think this one's a tough one when you're when you're just kind of, you're going to come off a win in Los Angeles and you got to go all the way to the East Coast and you're still trying to gel as a team. And I just think that this is a big one. And I know that the Ravens, with it being an AFC game, 
they got to have that one too, just for playoff seating. And so I think this is a tough one. I'm marking this down as a loss for the Raiders. Um, now we'll see how they look against the Chargers. If they come out and they're just gangbusters, I might think, well, maybe they got a shot in Baltimore. But as of right now, I'm marking this as a loss. Yeah, I'm marking that as a loss. Though I will say I think it's going to be close because the Ravens have a lot of changes mm -hmm. along their offensive line. I believe they have three new starters. So if there's ever time for Max Crosby, Malcolm Koontz, and Christian Wilkins to have a big game as a trio, that would be it. That would be the reason why it's an upset. But I do sp still respect the Raiders' offense, Lamar Jackson. Raiders, as we've talked about, have had trouble stopping the run. And who did they acquire? Derrick Henry. So that's going to be a big issue for the Raiders to figure out their run defense before week two. It is. And I'm interested to see as well that Raiders, I mean, that Raiders defense going up, like you said, the changes on the offensive line there for Baltimore, but Derrick Henry, right? So how do they do against the first kind of premier back uh, that they're going to see there? And of course, against Lamar Jackson too, it's going to be a test for that defensive backfield for the linebacking core and everybody up front, of course, but uh, it'll see, it'll be interesting to see how they handle one of the more dynamic players in the NFL. All right. So Mo and I both have the Raiders at one and one after two games. So far, you know, I think probably people are like, oh, yeah, I can, I'm okay with that. Now, they come home for their home opener at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas against the Carolina Panthers. I think this is a win. No game in the NFL is an easy win, but as long as the Raiders don't come out in the first two games and look absolutely awful, which I have no anticipation they will, I think they'll be fine. Uh, I think this is a game they come home to a raucous crowd at Allegiant Stadium. Carolina Panther fans are not traveling to Las Vegas. I'm making that prediction right now. So it will be all silver and black inside that joint, and I think it's going to be pretty crazy. And uh, Gardner Minshew's first home game, all that stuff, and I like the Raiders in this one. Yeah, there are no cupcakes on the schedule, but there are games that teams should win. <laughs> I think yeah. this is one of the games that the Raiders should win. No disrespect to Bryce, Bryce Young. He has a lot to prove yeah. this year. They have a new first-time head coach. Their defense is atrocious. Let, let me tell you, they, they they had to add cornerbacks after the final cuts because they've had cornerback injuries, cornerback issues. J.C. Horn can't stay healthy, and he's their best corner. So the Raiders, if this is the game where Gardner Minshew could have a, a big turnout where he can have 300-plus yards because of that Carolina suspect, Carolina Panthers secondary. Yeah, and I mean, even running back for them, Jonathan Brooks, a, a guy I like that they, that they drafted, uh, is out. He's on the pup for the first four games. And it's interesting with Carolina, though. I would watch them towards the end of the year. I'm not saying they're going to be a good team or a playoff team, but if if Bryce Young and that nice running back Brooks and and that defense, if they can at least play at least somewhat decent, you might see that team come a little bit alive towards the end of the season, and they could play spoiler for somebody on the NFC side uh, there. All right, so Mo and I both have the same. We have the Raiders at two and one after the first three games. Uh, week four is Cleveland. They host the Browns, so you. This is this is the second of three straight home games for the Raiders. I don't know that they've had three home games in a row at Allegiant in the last couple of years, but they do now. And you're looking at Cleveland coming in. Cleveland, of course, good defense. They have some good offensive weapons. We just don't know how the Deshaun Watson situation is going to work out. Is he going to regain any of his form? He's looked better in in preseason, uh, but I, I just don't know with this one. I think that I think that the Raiders win this one i think that they're going to excuse me lose this one um because of that defense i know it's going to shock some people uh but i just think that um uh with that disruptive defense and and even though it's at home i'm going to go the other way on this it surprised me i went back and forth on it but i'm actually going to say that uh, the cleveland game's a loss for the raiders how about you mo I'm going to go the other way and say it's yep. a win simply because of what you mentioned about Deshaun Watson. He hasn't been very good since the Browns acquired him. Mm -hmm. He's complaining about 60, only about 60% of his passes. He's had some injuries. He had some quote unquote arm soreness this off season where he missed some practice time. Maybe that was just an excuse for him to get out of practice. Who knows? But I'm kind of out on Deshaun Watson until he shows me otherwise. I know they have the playmakers around him with Amari Cooper and Jerry Judy and uh, Elijah Moore and, D and David Njoku. But no Nick Chubb to carry that offense on the ground. They have Jerome Ford, who's pretty solid. But also their starting two offensive tackles are coming off season-ending injuries, yeah. and they're kind of iffy right now coming into the season. So we don't even know the, what the condition of their starting tackles will be. So there's just too many questions on offense, even though they have a great defense. Raiders win this game like 13-7, to 13-6. It's a low yeah, that, scoring. I was just going to say that. I was going to say this is going to be a very low-scoring game. Uh, I have a feeling. So there we go. So Mo and I, I have them at two and two. Mo's got them at three and one. Then week five, you have Denver. I like the Raiders in this one. 
uh, for all the reasons that we know, not only the current streak, but I just think at this point in time, even though Bo Nix is going to start and you may have a good season, we'll see. I mean, it's, it's hard as a, as a, as a rookie. Uh, and then of course they have Pittsburgh in week six. I think this is two in a row for the Raiders here. Mo, how about you? Yeah, I, I also have this as two in a row. Bo Nix is a rookie, even though I like what I saw to Bo Nix in the preseason. Yes, I know against backups, but he looks like the real deal out there. I think Denver is going to be pointing in the right direction by the end of the season, but this is still an early matchup, and I think the Raiders could take advantage of a rookie quarterback. With the Steelers, I'm not buying too much into their offense. I know they upgraded from Kenny Pickett with Russell Wilson or Justin Fields. Russell Wilson will get the start. We don't know mm-hmm. who will be starting by this point in the season because who knows, they may make a switch. But they got one wide receiver in George Pickens. This is going to be a run-oriented team, which I know is Raiders' weakness. But I don't see a lot of I don't see a lot coming out of their pass game, which means they could be one-dimensional. I think, you know, with the Steelers and the Ravens Raiders playing close in the past couple of years, I think with the Raiders' offense, they get over the hump this time. Three wide receiver sets to stress uh, the back end of their cornerback group, and they win two in a row, as you said. Okay, so Mo's got the Raiders at a shocking five and one. Mm-hmm. He's gonna drop the hammer. Just wait. He's five and one. I have them at four <laughs> and two after the first six games. Then you have week seven, eight, and nine, three straight games. You have the Rams. This is where I have my Blake Corum note down. The Rams, <laughs> KC, of course, the Chiefs, and then the Bengals, which uh, uh, I'll see the gang here in Cincinnati for. Um, I have this Mo as three straight losses. Um, and it's right before the bye week. And I know that's tough, and people will be very upset if that does occur. But the Rams, uh, they had a shockingly good year last year. I think they're better this year. Kansas City, I think, is better this year. I think some of their offense is going to be much better with the receiving core they have and uh, the balance they have there. And I think their defense, yes, they have a couple question marks, but they're just still the class of the division, unfortunately, for Raider Nation. And then Cincinnati, as long as Joe Burrow doesn't get hurt in the first eight weeks, because that's a big if, uh, because he can't seem to stay on the field as good as he can be, um, I, I just think this is a rough part of the schedule for this Raiders team, and I just don't see uh, right now. Again, they could change my mind after the first couple of weeks, but right now I see these as three straight losses. Yeah, I agree with you here, and I pointed this out on Twitter that that is going to be the part of the schedule where you find out if the Raiders are a playoff contender or not. And mm. I, I don't think they're a playoff contender, honestly. And I think they do lose these three straight games simply because, and I'll run through it really quick, yeah. Assuming that Matthew Stafford is healthy, by the way, because the Rams are going to have Blake Corman, and Kyron Williams uh, there in the backfield, which could stress the Raiders' interior defense. But I do think the Rams are still going to be a playoff team. I don't, with all of, I don't want to say bulletin board material, but I don't think that the Chiefs, knowing what happened on Christmas last year, are going to allow the Raiders to beat them in consecutive games. I think they have, the Chiefs had this game circled, and they're going to try to remind the Raiders that they've been dominating this rivalry. Uh, with the Bengals, I just think the Bengals are going to be a team that's going to be in the Super Bowl hunt and, and a Super Bowl contender, assuming Joe Burrow is healthy. So assuming the quarterbacks are healthy for the Rams and the Bengals, uh, I can I comfortably can probably say that the Raiders are going to struggle in this stretch, and I have them dropping three, so I will have them at five and four at this point. Yeah, you'd have them five and four. I have them at four and five, so we're close there. And of course, they had to buy in week 10. And and again, I think that this those games too, by the way, if they could if they can pull – uh, what the Rams game? Yeah, but if they if they somehow were to win against Kansas City or on the road in Cincinnati, that could be a huge uh, turning point for them if it were to happen. I just don't see it happening though. So week ten, go ahead. Really quick, I'll say, yeah. and at this point, you have the trade deadline on the Tuesday after that Bengals game. So I yes. think if the if the Raiders are four and five as you predicted, or five and four as I predict. I don't think they trade off like this. That's going to be the big question. Are they going to trade yes. Devontae Adams at that point after a three game losing streak? Are they heading in the wrong direction? I think they're, they'll are they be in in the mix enough where they say we still want to keep our core players and move forward with what we have. I think so, too. I mean, if you're right around 500, it would be stupid to, to trade off pieces. Right. Uh, so I agree with you there. OK, so they come back from the mo- by and after having been in the eastern time zone in Cincinnati, guess what they got to do? They got to go to Miami, right? Uh, down in 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 Florida, and that's week 11. I also have that as a loss, Mo. I have that. I think that's going to be tough for them. I know the last time they were there, uh, what happened. And so so that puts me at uh, four and six for the Raiders after the first 11 weeks. I also have that as a loss. The Raiders losing four straight, um, which I get a lot of people don't want to hear, but the Dolphins still explosive offense. 
and their run game is probably going to be I – w- I believe it was top two or the top run game last year. They got Mostert. <laughs> they got Devon Achan. And then they drafted another speedster, Jalen Wright, who I went to raise yeah. the draft. But they drafted him as well. So they have a three-headed monster in the backfield, which is going to be tough for the Raiders. Christian Wilkins probably has this game circled as a revenge game, but they're going to give that defensive line a handful with their running backs, let alone Tyreek Hill. The last game the Raiders and Dolphins played was a sloppy game for the Dolphins. Very. Had a bunch of turnovers. I don't think they turn the ball over in that manner this time around. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. So there we go. We got the four. That's the really bad news out of the way. <laughs> four losses <laughs> yes. in a row, which you know might test patience out there. But nonetheless, that's where we're at. Okay. Then we get to week thirteen again. Uh, excuse me, week twelve against Denver. Again, I'm giving the Raiders that. Uh, and and by that time, I think. Bo Nix will be going through heavily growing pains. Uh, even if he's going to be a good quarterback in this league, I just think it's going to be tough for the Broncos this year, especially with all the changes they've had on both sides of the ball too. They've got some issues. Uh, and so I take that as a win, Mo. So that that would put the, the Raiders at five and six after the 12th week. Yeah, I got that as a win. But again, Bo Nix, while I do think he's going to be better than a lot of people expect, I don't think the Raiders allow the Broncos to come in their home and win that football game, they contend, They uh, continue their winning streak over the Broncos. Going back to the Buten years, I have them at 6-5 and five at this point. All right, there you go. Next, I know fans are going to get angry here. Our listeners, I know they're not going to be happy, but you can call in and tell us. That's fine. Raider Nation, 702-900-7869. <laughs> you can tell us. But uh, the next game, Week 13 against the Chiefs. Lucky Week 13 uh, is not going to be lucky for them again. So the Raiders... After losing those four in a row, they win against Denver, and then I think, again, they're going to drop the season series to uh, the Chiefs, and that would put them at 5-7 and seven at Week 13. How about you, Mo? Yeah, unfortunately, I have them losing this game simply because I don't see the Chiefs allowing the Raiders to beat them twice in their own home. Mm-hmm. So that would mean that I have the Chiefs sweeping the Raiders this year, which, again, I understand a lot of fans don't want to hear that, but if you look at the rivalry over the past <laughs> so years yeah. – it's, it's been lopsided, and the Raiders have had their wins here and there, but they haven't been able to string together consecutive ones. And, I, and again, with the Chiefs circling the first game against the Raiders and then not allowing the Raiders to win twice or consecutive games in on their turf, I think that matters a lot to the Chiefs, and, and the Raiders are going to get the best version of the Chiefs. Remember, in that game that the Raiders won, Aiden O'Connell didn't complete a pass. Now, hopefully, right. whoever the starting quarterback is able to complete a pass, but – <laughs> Chiefs have a better offense this year with Worthy coming in, and uh, Rasheed Rice should be over his suspension or at least playing. They got Hollywood Brown, who should be over his injury at this point. Chiefs a lot uh, more explosive on offense. So that's going to be something the Raiders are going to have to deal with. Absolutely. And look, until the Raiders can consistently put them away and beat them, you just kind of have to give it that way. It's just because it's the way it's gone. Now, I'm not saying that's not going to change. It could. Uh, but on paper right now, it's hard to see it. Okay. So I have them at five and seven at this point, and you have them at six and six. Uh, six and six. So right there, right there, pretty damn close. Okay, so now here were the two games that I really struggled with on this one. And so maybe I'm a little optimistic on a, a few of them that we, that you're not, Mo. But uh, week 14, they go to Tampa, right? Uh, yeah, they go to Tampa, and uh, they face the Buccaneers and Baker Mayfield. Now, am I saying the Buccaneers who – Clearly last year, Baker Mayfield had a good year and they played well above it, what anybody thought after losing Tom Brady. But um, I, I still think it's a tough game to go back to the East Coast again and uh, win in Tampa. And I think that uh, they will, though. I think this is going to be one of those games where the Raiders are going to be, in my in my predictions, a couple games under 500, knowing that if they want a chance at the playoffs, um, they got to win five more games. And so I think they going to Tampa know that that's a big way to try to turn that around. So I give them a win in Tampa and put them at six and seven. Right. I'm with you there. I think they beat Tampa. Tampa doesn't have a strong run game. Uh, Rashad White says, you know, draft him in fantasy, you know, take your word for it at your own risk. But uh, they, they have a new <laughs> offensive coordinator. Things should be worked out by December for them. But I, I think Tampa is just going to take a step back. This upcoming year, they've been winning the division by the skin of their teeth. They haven't been a really a juggernaut. Uh, Baker Mayfield on the way up, but he lost Dave Canales, who, who's <laughs> now in Carolina. So he has a new offensive coordinator. I know he has the playmakers and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. And there's a lot of excitement about Jalen McMillan. You know, Stork Ray likes to hear about that player. You dub. Uh, but <laughs> I think the Raiders pull this one out and, and they 
and they uh for me seven and six at this point of time to keep their playoff hopes alive right okay seven and six i have at six and seven then week 15 in atlanta excuse me at home against atlanta thank you uh they they return to allegiant stadium for two in a row and two of their last four games three of their last four games will be at allegiant stadium so that benefits the raiders i think greatly there so i have this i think this is where we differ i have this as a win which brings the raiders to seven and seven at 500 uh and mo i think you what you have them winning this game too or losing this game i have them losing this game i understand it's a Monday night football game and kirk cousins doesn't do well in the spotlight but i think having what the falcons did over the past month their defense i really like what they what they've done they added matt judon who's a premier edge rusher when healthy uh relatively healthy before last year and then you add justin simmons who still has a lot to offer on the back end of that defense as a, as a safety. I believe he's had three interceptions and five consecutive years. So they added two key parts to the defense. Even if Kirk Cousins, for some reason, is not playing, I think Michael Penix is going to be a good NFL quarterback. Now, if he's playing his second, his first or second game at this point, it could be a problem. But assuming Kirk Cousins is the same Pro Bowl player that he was before the Achilles injury, I think the Falcons pull this one out because I think at this point the Falcons are going to be pushing for a division title, and I think they'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. B. John Robinson is probably going to get a big workload here. B. John Robinson, I think, is going to win the rushing title, and I think he's going to give the Raiders a lot of issues. There you go. All right, so we're both at 7-7 seven and seven after 15 weeks. We had different paths there, yep. but we're both at 7-7 seven and seven going down the stretch. Now – uh, they after that game right before Christmas, they host the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, the Jaguars were a team last year really just hurt by injuries. There's a lot of expectations around Trevor Lawrence. This is a big year for him too. He just got his new deal. I think there are a lot of expected, especially with Peterson down there. Uh, Amir Khan, or, um, I forgot his first name. Khan, the owner of the the Jaguars, said, "Look, we want we, we need to win now." So I think Doug Peterson's on a short leash there. They have to win. I think they're going to be pretty good, especially. Uh, with the division that they're in. And I, I look at this one, and even though it's at home, I'm taking the Jaguars uh, over the Raiders in Week 16. Oh, we agree. I, I, I see the Jaguars bouncing back. I know a lot of people are down on the Jaguars because of the way their season ended last year. I think the one thing they have to correct are the turnovers. I think mm. they do correct that by running the ball a little bit more with Travis Etienne and Tank Bigsby. Uh, I really like Brian Thomas Jr., the wide receiver they drafted in the first round. I think he's... He's going to be a lot better than I think he's going to have more receiving yards than Malik Neighbors, who was drafted, I believe, fifth to the Giants. Fifth, yep. So I think he's going to have a huge year. And I do think the Jaguars are also going to be in the playoff hunt. The Raiders lose a close one, a painful one at home. Yeah. And I have them dropping that, dropping that one and going to uh, seven and what is that, seven and eight? Seven and eight. We're both at seven and eight. Uh, and clearly on the last two games here, uh, some really interesting points here, right? So we get to week 17, which is right before New Year's, and uh, a certain quarterback now playing in New Orleans <laughs> comes back to Las Vegas in his revenge game, I guess, uh, against the Raiders, and uh, the Saints walk in here. I The Saints are a really interesting team because I just don't know what they're going to be, but I actually have, as much as this will pain you, I have the Raiders losing this one. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I and, okay. I, I just give me 30 seconds. Here, yes. 45 seconds. Here. <laughs> I think the Raiders win this game simply because, and it's not because I hate Derek Carr. It's simply because <laughs> I don't trust the Saints offensive line. They've got some offensive line issues. They do. Uh, you know, their recent first round pick hasn't panned out. Now they, uh, they drafted Ta Talisi Fuaga, who I want the Raiders to draft. And I think he'll be fine. But overall, that offensive line is a big question mark. They're using Taysom Hill a lot, which may confuse some some defenses, but I think the Raiders will be on it. The other thing is, I don't think Dennis Allen is going to make it through the season. I think the I think the Saints are going to fire Dennis Allen within the first month or two of the year. I don't think he's going to finish the season as a head coach. He has a horrific head coaching record overall, going back to his time with the Raiders. Now, I know he was a young coach then, but he still has a horrific coaching record. I, I just don't see the Saints being a very good team at this point. Raiders win it and go eight and eight. See, um, I do 17 weeks. So I see, I see this a little differently. And, and, mm -hmm. and because, because of the Derek Carr equation, Derek Carr is used to coaches getting fired and then the team having to kind of rally. <laughs> and so 
I see the Saints by this time. I think you're right. I think Dennis Allen's mm -hmm. gone, and whoever they put in charge, right? I mean, good point. You, you look at that. You look at that staff. I'm trying to think some of the guys they have. Uh, let me go back. I have my my notes here on the staff. Um, when you look at uh, Clint Kubiak, who's the offensive coordinator, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he's a guy who had been been really bantied around for a lot of OC jobs last year, but also a couple head coaching jobs there mm -hmm. as well. So I think that he might be one of those guys that could step up and teams rally around. And Good you're one. right about the offensive line. I like the receiving core. I like Chris Olave. Uh, Derek Carr is Derek Carr. We'll see which version you're going to get with a tough offensive line. It could be bad. So it could go really bad. But um, that's this is one of the games that surprised me when I when I when I pick against the Raiders and I know people will hate that but that's just the way it is. All right, there you go. So I am at what am I at? I am at seven and nine, right? And you are at eight and eight. eight. You're at eight and eight heading into the home game against the Chargers, and this is where um, I think again. The, the, the Raiders uh, being at home in their final game against the Chargers. And I know uh, they played them the first game and the last game. Really interesting scheduling. It's supposed to be random, but it seems kind of funny that way. But I, I do think that uh, the Raiders at this point uh, being, in my, in my view, being at uh, uh, seven and nine, uh, playoffs are not going to happen, right? But I do think that the Chargers will be in a similar position, perhaps a worse position, and I think the Raiders, this is a pride game, and I think the Raiders uh, come out and they win this one and send uh, Raider Nation home with a team that went, once again, eight and nine. So we're going in different directions here. I think mm. both teams at this point could be eight and eight. And I think the, the winner of this game will have a shot to make the playoffs based on what happens around the league. Yeah, and I think course. that's also why the, the league labeled this as TBD, because then you can move it around based on – you know, the implications of this football game. Now I'm going to, I'm going to hurt Raider Nation a little bit here and say that the, the Chargers split the season series and win this game. So I had the Chargers winning in the season opener. I have, the, I had the Raiders winning in the, in the season opener. I had the Chargers winning in the season finale. By this time, Harbaugh will have complete control of this, of this team. Uh, the Harbaugh effect, the Harbaugh culture will be in full effect by this time because you have full season. Her, her, uh, Herbert, assuming he's healthy, will be comfortable, should be comfortable in that offense. We'll see where the running backs are. Both J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards have injury histories. But even if they needed running back help, you can always pick up a running back, whether it's at the trade deadline. You can pick up a running back off the street. We see it every year. Yeah. Teams pick up a running back, and you don't know who he is, and you wind <laughs> up going to your fantasy football waiver wire to find out who he is because he's running up and down the field. And I think the Chargers by this time, Again, we'll have the full Harbaugh effect where they're playing a physical football game. And I think with the Raiders' run defense still an issue, mm. that worries me against the Chargers team that's a, that's probably at this point a well-oiled machine. So I have, the Ra I have the Raiders finishing at 8 and 9. I think we both have the Raiders finishing at 8 and 9, just yes. getting to that record different pathways. Yeah, 8 and 9. And I, I listen, I'm going to make the bold prediction that I don't think Justin Herbert's playing by this point. I think I think the plantar fasciitis, it's, it's hard to get over that. And yep. it's really difficult, especially in this sport. I mean, it's difficult in any sport. I mean, I had it way back about 10 years ago. And, man, yep. it took me a good year to get over it. Now, these guys are obviously wow. world-class athletes. so And they got people around them to treat it every day and all that kind of stuff. But, again, that's why I think not that he's going to light the world on fire, but that's why I think they went out and got Heineke because they really felt – a concern there and it might be where he plays for three games misses a game plays for three games misses a game and then at this point yes they might if the both teams are there at eight and eight then he plays probably right but if it's mm -hmm. if it's a foregone conclusion that that they're not going to be in the playoffs and they might end up sitting them uh to get healthy for 2025 so i'm again i'm just making all kinds of guesses there yeah. but that's that's where i came at from the charter so there we go mo and i came up with the same result different ways again of getting there different games we will put this up in the description on the video and the podcast so you guys can keep track of it and come back and tell us you told us so or we told you so at the end of the year <laughs> i love that well there you go mo we got it all out got it all out so we'll see how the season ends up all right we're going to take our first break when we come back we're going to talk a little bit about what we just did with the schedule but also the rest of the afc i think a lot of folks when you talk about the raiders well, they're better here, they're better here. And that's absolutely true. Why you say, well, how can you say eight and nine if they got better? And last year, 
Well, the rest of the AFC got better too, in many cases, a lot better. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then in the final segment, we will get to your phone calls on the Raider Nation mailbag. Yes, sir. All right. We're going to go step aside when we come back. More show. It rolls on. All right, now it's time to tell you about our good friends at BetUS. We're going to make some bets here, right? Because we can tell you how great BetUS is, and they are. We can tell you about how great they are with payouts, fastest in the business. They're awesome. You can bet anything, live odds on almost anything you want, and, of course, NFL football. Uh, but today what I want to do is I'm going to well, I'm gonna go through. I, I, there's a game I really like. I told you I last time, last week, I bet against the Bears. Right. That was an old, that was the season win. But we're going to go into week one of the NFL. And I know it's it's, it's obviously a, 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 a big uh, game on Thursday night. Right. Uh, the Ravens and the Chiefs. The Chiefs are three point favorites at home, of course. Um, and and this is an interesting one, because I, I really despite I think the Chiefs being who they are, for some reason, I have a nagging feeling that it's going to be a low scoring game, even with the chiefs new offense, right. And, and the additions you talked about rice, you talked about coming back from last year. You talk about Hollywood Brown who won't be there, unfortunately for them for this game. And uh, I just don't know. I just think for me on this one, I really want to bet the under on this. Um, as far as the, the game goes itself, we're going to, you know, we're going to do some picks on Thursday uh, for folks, but right here, I, I just really think I love the under here with the uh with the Chiefs what do you think I'll agree with you on the under there usually those first games aren't as high scoring as we think they are I believe the Chiefs and Lions kicked it off last year and it was a little uh lower scoring than a lot of people thought yeah but I think that you know I, I like that bet yeah so I didn't I'm I didn't I didn't really consider that one I have another favorite but oh which one so I'm gonna put okay here's the deal Mo it's my money I'm gonna put <laughs> My money on the what you're going to give me right now. So I put 50 on the under 46 on BetUS uh, with the Chiefs and the Ravens on Thursday night with the season kicking off. What do you got for me, dude? Tell me. I'm putting 25 bucks up for Mo's bet. I, you tell me. I think the Green Bay Packers cover against oh. the Eagles. So you're saying Neutral. okay at three at plus three? Yes. Right. I, I like I like this game simply because. I feel like with you have two new defensive coordinators here, right? So yep. actually, let me take a look at the uh, the total. Is, the total is 49. 49. And, okay, so I'll, I'll say Packers cover, simply because you have two new defensive coordinator, coordinators, Vic Fangio with the Eagles, and you have Jeff Halfley with the Green Bay Packers. I think this is going to be a high-scoring game, but again, I'm first games, I'm a little more conservative with the totals, especially going over. But I think the Packers cover simply because Jordan Love is my dark horse to win MVP this year. Ooh. Uh, so he did in the second half of, of last season. Now he's going to have a – he had a full off season with his guys, fully healthy. Uh, the Eagles, while I do think they win the NFC East, I think these are the two teams that are going to be in the mix to, to win to, – to get the number one seed in that conference. But I think it's going to be a tight one, and I, and I can see the Packers definitely pulling it off. The Packers can go four deep at wide receiver. Yeah. Jaden Reed, Christian Watson, Romeo Doves, the, Tav the Tavion Wicks. Wicks. They have four wide receivers yeah. who can go off at any given time. And, oh, by the way, Luke Musgrave and Tucker Craft at, at tight end. They have a pretty decent offensive line that's returning most of their stars, and they added a first-round pick out of Arizona. I think the Packers actually win this game, but I, I feel comfortable with the cover. And, and they have a running back you may be familiar with. Oh, Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, yes, which is why he was smart going there and not signing with the Chiefs. <laughs> we heard that story this like, But nonetheless, okay, so I got 50 on the under 46. It's item 452 if you're on BetUS, which you need to be. If you're not there, use the link in our description, and you will get a special offer. Uh, and the Packers plus three in Brazil, by the way. So can you imagine all those reporters down there to cover it can't tweet because X was banned in Brazil? Because they don't believe in free speech there, apparently. So you cannot use X in. So what's the NFL going to do? Like it, they're, they're going to have to send their messages, like email to somebody in America who's going to have to tweet it from the United States. Very interesting. But anyway, so I'm putting down 75 to win 65-45 right here. Uh, so here we go. I'm placing the bet. There we go. Boom. I got Mo. If I lose, it's all Mo's fault. If I win, it's all me. <laughs> right? 
So there you go. So see how easy it is. And of course, BetUS has a great mobile app as well. Visit our friends. You need a sports book for this football season. It's starting Thursday. So don't wait. Check out the link in our description and go check out BetUS. All right. There we go. Eh, oops. In three, two, one. Welcome back. Silver and Black today, Odyssey Sports Original Podcast. Also, you can hear us on Sunday mornings before the game on the bet in Las Vegas, which is HD 289 and a half. Also, 101.5 FM, KDON. Yes, you can hear us there as well. Scott Branson, Mo Moten, back with you. Mo, you got a special announcement here. You got something special coming up for the rest of the season. Take it away. Let everybody know what you're up to now and the fact that, hey, just because Mo is going to do something different and he's going into the world of entertainment and all this kind of stuff doesn't mean he's not the same Mo. He's still Midtown Mo, but tell him, Mo, what you got going. Still Midtown Mo, but also now in a new place, I'm partnering up with Dub Club to have my fantasy football tips and advice, my player prop bets. You just saw, just heard me and Scott. Scott and I just place our bets. I have my player prop bets over on dub club so you will get exclusive bets not anything that i put out on bleach report or or on any other platform it'll be exclusive to my subscribers for about 80 81 cents a month but seven day free trial to start off Mm. uh, on labor day so that launched already that's out there so again nothing really changes uh it's not something that you have to subscribe to again i have my bleach report platform where i have against the spread bets I have other platforms where I have other types of fantasy football advice, sleepers, my fantasy trade market comes out on Monday. But for my subscribers over on Dub Club, just player props. So that won't be available anywhere else. Uh, also, I have access to a lot of research tools. So you'll get you'll get to know what I use to make my bets, why I make my bets. It's more about the why. I understand we all want to make money. This is not a get rich scheme, but <laughs> I plan to win a lot more then I lose and put some money in your pocket. So you'll get a peek into how I do my research and what I look for in these games. So a lot of those bets will drop on Monday for Monday Night Football, Thursday for Thursday Night Football, and of course, Saturday morning for the Sunday, uh, Saturday night for the Sunday slate and Sunday Night Football. You'll get all those bets. I would say about, you know, uh, 15 bets a, a week at minimum. We may go more if I like certain games, if I like certain edges. As you know, I follow the Raiders closely, so there'll be a lot of Raider player prop bets in there as well. So, again, over at Dub Club, it's on my uh, X handle profile. If you want to click the link and subscribe, again, it's about 80, 81 cents a month. But there is a seven day free trial to start out. There you go. Mo on Dub Club. Oh, man. It's just like he's a philanthropist. He's trying to help you, <laughs> he's trying to give you money. He's, just, he's there. So check it out. Very exciting stuff, man. That's pretty cool. Because, yeah, if you follow Mo, too, from, from Bleacher Report, all the, the fantasy stuff he's done in the past, uh, really good stuff. He tends to lose to me in our fantasy league, but he's apparently, outside of that, I don't know if we just freak him out or what, but but he he does pretty good. So you definitely want to follow him. And uh, I did find out, Mo, did you see, and I forgot the name of the service. I'll have to look at it. There is a way, and I have to do this for our silver, and, the, and we'll have on Thursday too, we'll talk about our silver and black today league. And we're going to start having the people that are in that league come on with us during the season. So we'll have them on some for on video for some guest sessions as well. So we can talk some smack and have some fun. Of course, James won it last year. So we'll have to have him on first. But we um, did you, there's a service out there that you can connect your fantasy league to, and then you can bet on your fantasy games. Did you know this? Really? Yes. Really? Yes, unfortunately, I tried to hook up. We had our 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 fantasy, my my one league. I'm in three leagues. Our league, obviously, we're here with the show. I'm in a league with my buddies from my cigar lounge here in Cincinnati. And then I'm in a league I've been in with a bunch of people forever. That's a no money league. It's just for fun. Well, I went and I saw this and I was like, oh, this is awesome. But it didn't connect. We have a on that one, we use sleeper for our league at the at the lounge. And um, this thing pops up, and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. So you can bet on fantasy games. I was like, this is amazing. What? So you could talk trash to people and say, all right, let me see you bet bet on my team. What are we going to do? Um, not that anybody That's could fix pretty things. Sweet. It is pretty cool. So I got to find out how I do it. But anyway, I know yeah, it definitely. sounds like a de- degenerate gambler, but it's pretty fun because it's just with, with your group of fantasy football owners just talking trash. Now you can put money behind it. 
Yeah. It's kind of fun. But anyway, good stuff. But by, make sure by the Dub way, Club. Dub Club. By the way. Dub Club, by the way, 64% hit rate on my money line bets last year over at Bleacher Report. I was 47 and 27 in fantasy football leagues. That's about a 64% win rate in yes. fantasy football leagues over across over across five leagues last year. So over at Dub Club, you're not getting the information and fancy tips from some schmuck who's just, you know, <laughs> pulling plays out of his rectum. You know, I, I have a good I have a good performance rate. You can check out my <laughs> Dub Club profile and look at it. No stunads for you Italians out there. All right. <laughs> good stuff. And uh, Mo, you can find the, the links and just watch his x.com account and you'll see the stuff for dub club as well as bet us you know it's just everybody's lining up for mo uh and uh next is going to be the bachelor so we'll see no i'm just kidding <laughs> no we don't need that anyway all right so we're talking uh, real quickly before we get to the raider nation mailbag because we want to we want to give uh, enough time for that and i know we're going to have a long show today because we're excited about the season starting okay the AFC, Mo, one of the things, too, and we have such great conversations, you know, not 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 uh, adversarial or anything like that, but we have great conversations with our listeners. A lot of them, not only do they call in, but they message us, they DM us, um, they send us emails, all kinds of stuff, text some of us. Some of them have our personal phone numbers and they text us. And one of the things that I get, it's like, why do you guys think the Raiders aren't going to be a 10-win team with they got better here, they got better there, they got better here? Absolutely. The Chargers aren't very good, blah, 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 in their own division. Yes, the Chiefs are still going to win the division. But nonetheless, the rest of the AFC, Mo, if you look around a team, it wasn't a fluke last year with the Texans. That's my contention. Now, there's always the opportunity for a sophomore slump with a quarterback. I get it. Texans got better. You look at the Ravens, question marks up front like you talked about. Yes, the Bengals got better. And if Joe Burrow stays healthy, they're better than last year. And very easily, and they're the only teams that have, they're the only team that's been able to really beat the Chiefs. So you look at those teams uh, around the league, you look at um, other AFC teams, the AFC North overall, the Browns, Steelers. I know you could go either way. You got the Bengals there. there there's, there's a lot of good teams in, in the AFC that got better. So the Raiders, while they got better, it's not like, other teams fell back and now they're in the top echelon. They still have some ways to go. It's not a bad thing. It just takes time. You can't go from being a kind of purgatory team to being a, a Super Bowl caliber. And everyone else has had a pretty good offseason. Not everybody, but a lot of teams in the AFC at the top of the conference have. Right, Scott. And what I like to tell Raider fans who say, hey, if the Raiders got better, how can their record get you know worse or stay the same? And I tell people – fans this all the time. The Raiders weren't the only team that went through a full draft. The Raiders right. aren't the only team that went through free agency. The other the other 31 teams also got better. So you have to really, you can't go on, we're better, so we have to have a better record because that can apply to 25 other teams. <laughs> and that's not mathematically possible. So some teams are going to stay the same, even though they got better on paper. Some teams are going to regress, even though they got better on paper. We know injuries have something to do with that too. But we pointed something out at the end of last year, the Raiders played a string of backup quarterbacks. Now they had a backup quarterback as well. And I understand that, but now they could be playing teams that don't have backup quarterbacks and they still have a, what a lot of people will call a low end starter, high level backup. So their quarterback position is not much better than it was mm -hmm. last year, while other teams may have their starters back on the field. So you have to factor that in. And also, you're not playing the same schedule you played last year. I think the Raiders' schedule is tougher than a lot of people um, think it is, simply because I think the NFC South is going to be a little bit better with the Falcons, with the additions they make, Kirk Cousins, Matt Judon, Justin Simmons. Also, you have to look at you know other, other teams outside of the division, outside of the conference, like the Buccaneers, uh, getting better. So... You, you have to take all that into account. It's not as simplistic as, oh, the Raiders roster is better. They should have a better record. You also have to factor in the changes that other teams made and how that measures up with the Raiders. And I, and we talked about it all um, offseason during the preseason that I think the Raiders are going to struggle with teams that have good run games. We, we've seen it for the first two years with Patrick Graham. The Raiders haven't been better than, I believe, 17th or 19th against the run since he's taken over as a defensive coordinator. Now, their pass rush will be pretty good with Christian Wilkins added to the mix. And I know he's decent at the run, but still, with the yeah. starters in the game in the preseason, vanilla defense, I will say. But I think the run defensive issues with the Raiders are more of a Patrick Graham issue because 
as I pointed out two shows ago, and Tarek, <laughs> I gave Tarek the bad news, and he commented on this. <laughs> Patrick Graham has been a defensive coordinator for five seasons, and only one of those seasons has he had a top 10 run defense. All the other run defenses he's had have been bottom half of the league. So just keep that in mind. I think Patrick Graham has to make some tweaks if the Raiders are going to uh, show up their run defense. I think that's going to be a problem for them throughout because other teams watch. They know the, where the Raiders' sure. weaknesses are, and it's not necessarily in the secondary. It's up front running the football. So uh, yeah. that's my reason why how or how the Raiders can look better on paper but still wind up with the same record they had last year. And, and I go back to the quarterback thing, and I know some people out there vehemently disagree with us, and that's cool. I, I, I'm, I'm, not, yeah, I'm not always right, clearly. But I just think that it is the biggest limiting factor. Now, if they had a rookie quarterback, would they be any better this year? Perhaps. I mean – Look what C.J. Stroud did, and I'm just using recency. I know some rookies come in, and we'll see how Bo Nix does this year, right? They come in, some are lost, some just take to it right away. You don't, you never know. But I look at that, and I just say, look, that's the biggest limiting factor with this team. Yes, they have some holes elsewhere, especially Mo. You just pointed them out on defense with the run and in the defensive backfield. We'll see how that all works out. Uh, Adoree Jackson, by the way, re-signed with the Giants, right? Um, <laughs> so so we'll see, though. I mean, maybe they'll perform better than we think they will in certain areas, and others they won't. But again, limiting factor quarterback. And, and again, I just think that that's a big deal. And watching college football over the weekend, um, and I, I watched your guy specifically. I watched the whole game, the Miami game against Florida. Florida's just brutal. He's Can't done. I, I don't think he lasts four games um, uh, as coach at Florida. But Cam Ward looked good. Uh, looked really good. I know Raider fans, uh, it almost seems like they're already falling in love with him, which is fine, but just be aware that I think that if I look at the quarterbacks in the draft this year, Mo, and I know we're not here talking about the draft, but just to talk about that importance of that position, I look at three guys I think that are tailor-made for the Raiders in what I call like a tier one, and I think that's Carson Beck at Georgia. I think that's Quinn Ewers at Texas, and uh, Jackson Dart. I still like Jackson Dart. And then I think that next tier to me is, and that might be where they're at based on their draft. If, if the Raiders finish where we have them finishing is Cam Ward. Uh, and then we'll see, I think Riley Leonard is a, is a, is a talent too at Notre Dame. He transferred from Duke. He can run the ball, dude. I mean, he's, he's big. He's a big quarterback who can throw the ball down the field. He's got a good arm. Uh, and he reminds me not arm strength wise, cause his arm's not as good. So don't take, take, take this wrong, but he reminds me of a Josh Allen type who is, can throw the ball, sit in the pocket all day long, but also if he has to run, I mean, he was a leading rusher for Notre Dame in their win over Texas A&M. So those quarterbacks, I think no matter what happens with the Raiders this year, there's going to be a quarterback. One of these one of these five guys will be in that first round that the Raiders could draft. So I would tell Raider fans, watch some of these guys too, and hopefully next year they address it. You know the one guy you didn't mention that's going to be the polarizing prospect fit yes. for the Raiders? Shador Sanders. Sanders. Yes. There are going to be a section of Raider fans that are going to say, don't want any parts of Shador Sanders. Right. And there are going to be parts of Raider Nation that says, bring him over here. Have you seen his accuracy? Have you seen his pocket presence? Have right. you seen the numbers that he's putting up? So that's just prepare for that. That conversation is going to divide a lot of Raider Nation. It will. The, the question is, and you heard Dion this past week saying he's got a list of teams that his sons will not play for. Are the Raiders on that list or are they not on that list? I don't know. Do you want to find they, out now uh, if, if they're in position and the word sneaks out that they might draft him, then Dion would tell us, I would imagine. So the Raiders could, might be able to make a decision there, but yeah, it'll be interesting. That's going to be a whole drama because anything around Dion and I love Dion as a player um, is going to be drama. It's just the way it is. So you got to, if you want to sign up for that, that's what you're going to sign up for. But yes, he is up there too with that top tier quarterback uh, stretch as well. So we'll see how it all goes down, but that's it. So you look at it and you say, okay, but that, that rest of that, I mean, again, too, Mo, before we go to the break here, I think about the AFC West as well. And again, the chiefs are the chiefs. I don't think the Broncos, you know, I, even with the rookie quarterback, even if he has a great season, I, I don't know why people see them. I get, I get the coach Peyton, all that kind of stuff. It's, you think so? The legacy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Sean Peyton. He won a Super Bowl. I get he did it with Drew Brees, but yeah. he had a pretty decent record when he had Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston as yes, his he did. starters. So I think they're giving him, they're giving Bo Nix the benefit of the doubt via Sean Peyton. And that's why. Now, if the Raiders had a more established head coach, I think it would be a little bit different, 
But because Antonio Pierce is still relatively inexperienced and you compare his resume to Sean Payton's and Jim Harbaugh's and, and Andy Reid's, he's clearly at the bottom when you compare resumes, just yeah. comparing resumes. Now, where are the Raiders end up? We'll see. But that that's why you see a lot of media outlets have the Raiders at the bottom is, is, is because of their head coaching and experience and it's because of the quarterback situation. Right, right. Absolutely. And and look, I think that you look at the Chargers and again, I don't think that I don't think their roster. I mean, they have a couple of good players up front, of course, on the defense, but I, I don't think their roster is as good. But the, the one pause I give with that is that. You look at Harbaugh. He, he he does. He did it last time in the NFL. He did quick turnarounds. So you know they they might be playing on fumes, and they win more games than they should. So that's the only team. I again, I still think the Raiders finish above them, but I I just like I have a little bit of that in my mind. I don't know if other Raider fans do. I know a lot of Raider fans are like, oh, they're gonna suck. That's fine. But I, I just think that uh, that's an unknown. So we'll see where it goes. But overall, AFC is just tough, tough, tough football. I think if Herbert plays most of the games, the Chargers would be nine and eight. I, a lot of people are picking them to win 11, 12 games. I, yeah, I just feel no. like they don't have enough at wide receiver, and they're depending on two running backs with an injury history. I get they're going to be a physical football team, but in today's league, you have to score points, and you're going to have to do it through the air a bit. So I think that's going to hold them back. But th if you've seen their schedule, their schedule is pretty – I don't want to say easy – yeah, but it's a light schedule, and I think that's where the that's where I have the Chargers winning nine. So people say, well, if you have the Raiders improving this much, and you have your concerns about the Chargers. How do you have the Chargers with a better record than the Raiders? The schedules are the schedule. different. Look right. at the Chargers' schedule; it yeah. is not as difficult as the Raiders' schedule, in my opinion. Right, I agree with you. All right, we're going to take our final break. When we come back here on Silver and Black today, we're going to get to you. We're going to get to your calls on the Raider Nation mailbag. You're with Mo and Scott. We're coming back right after this. Enough of hearing us talk about the Raiders. It's time to hear from you. Many Oakland Raider fan, Las Vegas Raider fan. Stand up. On this edition of the Raider Nation Mailbag. Got a black hole rock and rolling. Don't be a wallflower. Be a part of the show. Leave your question or message by calling 702-900-7869. That's 702-900-7869. Or drop us an email at mail at silverandblacktoday.com. All right. Time to get to it. We won't waste any time. If you want to be part of the show, by the way, with Mo and I, please call in 702-900-7869. 702-900-7869. As we go through the week, give us your prediction for this week. What's going to happen in Los Angeles against the Chargers? And then, of course, we have our post-game show on Sunday nights after the game. And after that, you can call in for the next show. Tell us what you thought about the game, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to get to plenty of that. By the way, don't forget, check out the link below to our friends at BetUS for a special offer. Okay. Whew. We're just rolling, man. I love this. I love this. Okay. We're, we're regular season form, Scott. It, we're it's, ready. it's getting there. And we got a bunch of calls again. Got some new callers, some return callers who haven't called in for a while, some regulars. It's a little mixed bag of everything, which I love. So here we go. We're starting off with Misha down in OC, Orange County, California. What's up, Scott? What's up, Mo? What's up, Raider Nation? This is Misha calling from Orange County, California. Um, I actually have a, a, a two part question i guess you can say but my, my first question um and this probably sounds pretty insane but <laughs> what do you guys think about sort of like a dual quarterback um situation and i'm not talking about you know starting Gardner for a couple of games and then starting aiden for a couple of games based on how they perform i'm talking about in game so in other words you know maybe if we're playing a certain uh, opponent that has a weaker uh, secondary, you know, playing Aiden because he's, you know, he can throw the ball deep um, or if we have a playing an opponent who maybe blitzes more, you know, playing Gardner because he's more mobile and he can, you know, get out of the pocket and escape the, the rush quicker. Um, but kind of like shifting him in and out throughout the game. I know it sounds crazy, but you know what? I'm just kind of throwing things at the wall here, hoping they stick because I don't think I can handle another uh, <laughs> shit show of the season. He's a French. Um, we haven't done anything since, you know, when Mitch Gann was around. And I think Raider Nation is uh, 
is ready to start winning. So I'm just, I'm throwing Hail Marys at this point. <laughs> but um, my, my second question is, what do you guys think are the uh, ramifications if we have another awful season when it comes to guys like Max Crosby and Devante, um, you know, because those guys want to win now. And if we have another piss poor season, um, how do you think it's going to go with them? Do you think these guys are going to be willing to sit around and wait for us to, you know, become relevant? Um, how do you think that's going to play out? Um, but that's all I got. Much love guys. Much love to Raider Nation. Misha from Orange County, California. Thanks for the call, man. Good stuff. Good call. Good mm -hmm. stuff. The, the the old adage, I'll start this, Misha. The old adage in the NFL is if you have two starting quarterbacks, you have no starting quarterbacks. Right? And so I because because uh, you know, the way you brought it up, you're really just asking a really good question about, you know, hey, is this something that you don't consider? The last time a team had two starting quarterbacks and it actually worked wasn't that long ago. It was 1950. 1950, Norm Van Brocklin and Bob Waterfield for the Rams. And it actually worked that year. They had the highest scoring offense uh, and they played in the NFL championship game and they lost to Cleveland that year. So to me, it's just, no, you can't be in that position. But I did say, and you and I talked about this a couple weeks ago, Mo, that when, when Minshew won the job, that we see both quarterbacks starting games this year. And that could not, it doesn't necessarily mean it's because one quarterback doesn't perform well. It could mean that to your point, Misha, matchups, things like that, teams you're going against might favor one quarterback or the other, or they might just have a better week or whatever. I think it's going to be that way. I don't, I think if you're looking for a settled situation at quarterback, you will not find it this year. Misha, I'll say this about the, the dual quarterback approach. It only works if you have a quarterback who's extreme, not extremely, but very athletic, and you can put him in for a package of plays. So, like, the Steelers are going to start Russell Wilson, but Mike Tomlin has already said that Justin Fields is going to have a package of plays. Mm -hmm. You see the Saints do this with Taysom Hill, right? And I think you're going to see more of this as time goes on with, with quarterbacks who may not be as mobile. But with when you have two quarter now, Gardner Minshew is more athletic than Aiden O'Connell, but he's not, a, he's not a Taysom Hill, Justin Fields type player where you can put him in and, and run a read option near the goal line. Just you don't run a package of plays for either player. So <laughs> I don't think it works here. And, and there are just too many technical hangups when you have two quarterbacks in the huddle. Different cadences. The offensive line has to get used to one being a little more mobile than the other. Uh, throwing the football, catching the football from the quarterback. You know, different quarterbacks have different ball placements. So you don't want to disrupt the rhythm of your starting quarterback. And this is why you don't see the dual quarterback approach because you want your quarterback – to get comfortable. Now, if he's rolling, you know, you keep him in the game, of course. Yeah. But even if he's struggling, you don't want to just pull him because then he's looking over his shoulder after every incomplete pass, after every turnover, after every mistake. Are they going to pull me out of the game? You want your quarterback to be comfortable. You don't want to have a revolving door at the quarterback position on the pro level. Yeah, 100%. And then his point to um, later on in that call as well. What do you think, Mo? Yeah, th that's an easy answer. It, Devontae Adams is going to be 32 years old in December. Max Crosby just turned 27 in August. Max Crosby also just signed a new deal. Remember that. So while the, all the Antonio Pierce stuff was going on, remember Max Crosby uh, signed a new – well, they redid his contract, right? So I think he's locked in, Max Crosby. But Devontae Adams, it could change by midseason. And I've said, I said this during the predictions that if the Raiders – are three and six or worse by the trade deadline, I can see them moving Devontae Adams and not necessarily to the Jets, but just a team who's looking for top tier wide receiver help. Mm -hmm. Again, Devontae Adams is going to be 32 years old. If the direction of this team doesn't look good, again, if they're, as you said, piss poor by midseason, I can see them agreeing and saying, hey, we could send you to a contender, get some draft picks. We are going to have to rebuild this roster. And he, I can see Devontae Adams saying, I'm not going to sit here for another two to three year rebuild. I don't, yeah. I may not have another two to three years. I'm going to be in my mid thirties by that time. <laughs> so, you know, I can see it. I can see the plans changing. Now he said he's, he's doubted into the Raiders until, you know, until otherwise, until they, you know, if they decided to go in another direction. But again, if it's 
not looking good by the trade deadline. The Raiders are going to have to look toward the future. And their most viable asset outside of Max Crosby on the trade market is Devontae Adams, who I'm sure will probably be okay with going to a contender and trying to win a Super Bowl before he retires. Yep, absolutely. Misha, great call. I appreciate it. All right, now we go to Raiders Skeptic. He changed his handle. He'll tell you why. Hey, this is uh, Raiders Skeptic. <laughs> um, the artist formerly known as Raider Heck. City <laughs> Whittier. <laughs> changed my name. But, hey, I'm calling in about, uh, uh, situ you know, the team, team going into this year, and I agree with you guys on the Getsy, uh, uh worried about Getsy, seeing what he can – what he can do. I mean, that looks more like a offensive line coach than a offensive guru, you know, but, uh, <laughs> and it looks to be deceiving, you know, but, uh, the other guy, uh, the player I have a problem with, and I may be wrong, but I, I think Devontae Adams, uh, might be a cancer on this team. And, <laughs> and, and, and uh, I'm, you know, maybe I'm talking out of my ass, but, I don't know. I just see a bad, <laughs> bad deal with him, and uh, and I know the Packers uh, uh, didn't sign him. They're waiting to sign Aaron Rodgers first, right? Or uh, am I talking mad at my ass there? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I want to see what your guys' opinion is on that, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'm wrong. Or but uh, but yeah, it's all I got, and. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I got one uh, thing kind of off topic here. Uh, uh, you guys are kind of part of the media. I uh, want to know if you guys know anything what's going on with the, the P Diddy situation. <laughs> uh, I've been kind of quiet on that thing. Kind of want to know if you guys know anything about it, uh, and if uh, Bet US is going to have any prop bets on if uh, Diddy does any time. <laughs> uh, yeah. You guys got info on that? That'd be, I love it. That'd be cool. <laughs> well, anyway, that's all I got. Uh, go Raiders. Raider skeptic. Some mic drops Ra in the call. Wait, let me. Ra I'm, call I'm calling. Skeptic. I'm calling Diddy right now. Hey, uh, yeah. No, just kidding. <laughs> Raider uh, skeptic has moved up my power rankings of Raider callers. That that was that was <laughs> that was hilarious. funny. Uh, Devonte Adams is a cancer. I don't. I've never heard that sort of. Uh, I've never heard him called that or a disruption in the locker room when he was in Green Bay or in Las Vegas. Now, I think there's a difference. If he's unhappy, it, does he become a cancer? I don't think so. I think he's a pro's pro, but if he's not happy, people would know it. And does that carry weight with it? Absolutely, Mo. I'm actually Raider, Raider skeptic now. Uh, mm -hmm. Is not the first person that's asked this question to me, actually. Yeah. There, yeah. there have been some people on X who said, you know, Devontae Adams, is he great for the locker room? Because he's, and I think they say this because he's outspoken. But I do think there's a difference between between being outspoken and being bad for the locker room. Right. I don't think Dev Devontae Adams is bad for the locker room because I think his attitude, for the most part, is something that you want to exemplify. Like, guy comes to work and works hard, you know, yeah. like, you know. Every play misses plays. I'm sure you can run back the film where he missed a block. I think that was brought up in a previous call month a month ago, uh, where he wasn't maybe trying as hard. Look, with Devontae Adams, I don't think he ever becomes a problem. Now, if he eventually wants a trade, I think he does that quietly behind closed doors and the move is made. Uh, but I don't think he makes a big stink in the locker room because he also understands that he's a leader in that locker room. So, as you said, I didn't hear anything about him being bad for locker room in Green Bay. I don't yeah. expect to hear anything bad about him in the locker room now, simply because, again, this is a guy that players also look up to, and he understands that. He understands the weight that's on his shoulders as a leader of this football team. Now, again, if things go sideways this year, I think, as you said, I think he handles it as a pro and then just moves on without making a big deal in the locker room. All right. Raider Skeptic, thanks, man. Good call. Appreciate it. Thanks for making us laugh well, as well. And Diddy. We'll check the bet U.S. props for Diddy, though. We'll yes. check that. Mo will get in touch with his. Uh, doesn't your limo driver drive Diddy, too? <laughs> no? Okay. No connection at all. No I don't connection. want any okay. connection to all that. All right. All right. I all. agree. I agree. No, you don't. All right. It's time for Luis in Oakland. Mo and Scott, how are you fellas doing? This is uh, Luis again calling from Oakland. And I just want to let you guys know uh, you guys do a great job. I watch you guys every Tuesday and Thursday. Thank you. 7 o'clock p.m. 
on the West Coast, Pacific time. So I just want to give you my thoughts on you guys do a great job. And I don't miss the show for anything. Wow. Anyways, I'd just like to let you guys know uh, Tariq McAllister just made the team, the three man roster. And we haven't had a punt return or a kickoff return. I can't even remember how long ago. But uh, what do you guys think? Do uh, you think we'll have uh, more than two or three touchdowns this year in the return mm. game? Okay. Thank you, Mo and Scott. You guys have a great day. All right. Luis in Oakland, man. Thanks for the kind words. We really appreciate that. And uh, we appreciate you listening and watching as always. So thank you. He's watching us on YouTube, which you can, of course, make sure you go subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're doing it there as well. Uh, yeah, I like this guy. Mo. I think that the, adding that, especially with the new dynamic kickoff, right, that the NFL has, and you actually have a chance to return the ball now. Uh, we'll see what happens. The, the issue with guys like that is if they start racking it up, start getting touchdowns and like that, then people start kicking away from them. But it's a good problem to have. I think it's it's great for the Raiders. I think the special teams is one of the things that in the preseason and during camp, uh, it kind of goes – I mean, we know how good the kickers are for the Raiders, but the special teams overall, it's one of the reasons they kept seven linebackers. They talked about this in the press conference because they really like what they have there. And it can be a difference maker, especially for a team like this who might be lacking in other positions. If you can make some big plays, create turnovers, create scoring opportunities and special teams – uh, then you have a great opportunity. So, so I like Luis's call here and, and three touchdowns. I don't know, but he certainly gives them a good dynamic on kickoff and on punt returns. Bold prediction for Luis. Tariq Ooh. McAllister re returns at least, at least three, kick three punt returns, at least three. I, I actually think that I, with the way the rules are set up, because remember, these aren't the same rules as last year. Now with last year's <laughs> rules, I would say three is a stretch. But remember, the NFL is encouraging more returns. So mm -hmm. even if you were to kick away from McAllister, the Raiders would be taking the ball from, I believe, the 30 or the 40 yeah. uh, with the rules. So, it, you know, the ball goes out of bounds. I believe it's at the 40. So you don't want to give the Raiders that type of field position, even with the quarterback that they have. So I, I think even with good kick, kick returners specifically, you're going to have to kick to those guys now. Punt's a different story. But with yeah. kick return, with kick return, that ball has to land and has to go in the landing zone between the goal line and the 20. And if it doesn't, you're giving that offense good field position. So I think it's going to give a lot of opportunities for Tyreek McAllister to return some kicks for touchdowns. I think he gets two kick returns for a touchdown, one punt return. That's my bold prediction for this special teams unit. Plausible, for sure. Luis, good call, man. And again, thank you for the kind words from Mo and I. We appreciate that very much. All right, now we're going out to John in Oroville, California again. Hey, good morning, Scott and Mo. It's John from Oroville. Just got back to town from a nice little getaway to Anaheim. Spent about a week at Disneyland with the family. And wow. I really want to thank you guys because in the mornings before we go to the park, I would take about an hour and catch up on the news on the podcast get all the updates on the roster moves and uh, really was a great time getting away from town and keeping up on the news. Uh, really happy with the roster situation. Honestly, I'm thrilled Tyreek McAllister made the team. Uh, looks like Charles Snowden, I think made the practice squad. I'm happy about that. All in all, I'm really happy about the 53. Um, I think we're going to have a good year. You guys, I appreciate you talking me off the ledge when they named <laughs> Minshew the starting quarterback. Uh, I'm feeling better now. <laughs> Still not thrilled with that situation, but uh, hey, I'm 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 feeling positive about the season. So, enjoyed some college football yesterday and looked at some potential quarterbacks that we could end up <laughs> taking a look at in this coming draft. That uh, Moss Miller from USC was looking really good uh, against LSU. Uh, he might be a guy to keep an eye on. And, of course, Sidori Sanders looked really good also. And, you know, Beck's out there. It's just fun seeing what our team might be if we upgrade one of our quarterback spots, Minshew's spot, with uh, a new quarterback uh, out of the draft next year. I know he hasn't played his first game yet. <laughs> and I'm sure he'll do just great. But uh, always fun to add talent to a position. Anyway, you guys have a great day. Thanks so much. We've got six days to go, and I am pumped up about this season. <laughs>
Let's go, Raiders. There you go. John Orville listening to us at Disneyland. Did you get nice. one of those big turkey legs, man? No? Big turkey legs. Have you been to Disneyland? Are you been to Disney World yet, Mo? Not in a long, like forever. Yeah. Not in my adult life. I hate big crowds, so it's like. And yeah, it's I'm not, not a big crowd guy either. I don't mind big crowds for games, but like when you're talking about lines. <laughs> lines. Our friend Evan Goat hates Ooh. lines. Luckily, my kids are older now, so like if they want to go, they can go by themselves. But. <laughs> That's the way it goes. But John, good call there. Uh, and yeah, I mean, look, I think that you, you, he talked about where talking him off the ledge and 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 the quarterback situation, all that stuff. And again, I just remind people, my advice is just still don't get too high, don't get too low. There's going to be ups and downs, and uh, the Raiders will do what they do this year. You should be optimistic. Like I think fans should be optimistic, even despite the fact that we told them they're going eight and nine. They should be optimistic because you never know. Two of those games can go the other way very quickly. Right. And and if we're predicting they go eight and nine, let's say we're in a ballpark. You 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 know it's a it's a you know a win here, a loss there that could get you in the playoffs. Yes. You know, who knows? Nine and eight could get them in. Now now I believe it was ten and seven last year that got you in an AFC, but injuries happen, you never know. So a win here, an upset here, a quarterback gets hurt there. Yeah, and they're in the playoff hunt. So if you're on the cusp, as long as you have a chance, there's something to be optimistic about. Now about the call, about John's call, I also want to. I also want to remind John, Amari Gaynor, I think mm. was the guy that I liked as one of the, I guess, long not long shots, but coming into the um, training camp was a long shot to make the roster. Number fifty three made the fifty three. I stole that from our guy Q over at Red Nation Radio mm -hmm. when he said that. I like that that line that he had. But Amari Gaynor is going to be a big part of that linebacker core, especially with Tommy Eichenberg uh, nicked up and Luke Matheson a bit sus, not a bit suspect, but he's a, he is suspect against the run. If the Raiders want to run three linebackers, a base defense on early rundowns, I think Amari Gaynor is going to have a bigger role than a lot of people think. Uh, about the QBs, I know we, we're not going to do a deep dive into college QBs, but you've heard that the QB class – next year isn't going to be as good as the QB class this year, which may be true. But I think they're going to be a handful of QBs that you look at and go, that guy could be a franchise player. So mm -hmm. even if you are depressed about the Raiders quarterback situation now with Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell, the Raiders should have an opportunity to get a young prospect, a, a young high upside prospect in next year's draft. We talked about a few today. John brought up another one. I Look, I think they will they will have their options regardless of where they draft. Even if they're drafting between 15 and 20, you know, you move up a few spots if you want a guy that you have your eye on, but they will have their crack at their young potential franchise quarterback next year. Nah, exactly. Good stuff. Yeah, and you know what? They say, well, it's not going to be as good as the class last year. That's now. I mean, now. you could have four guys just go nuts, and mm -hmm. suddenly you're in the same position you were this year. There's four guys that are going to go in the top 10 picks of the draft. I mean – you just never know with college quarterbacks because uh, they they come out of nowhere. So I mean, look what happened with Burrow, right? I mean, look at that last year he had just crazy. He was already on the radar, but still, that just catapulted him to the number one overall pick. So there you go. All right, good call, John from Oroville. Now we're going to close out the Rail Raider mailbag and our show today with uh, one of our old friends. That is Jacob in Fresno. Scott. Gilly, gilly, go, Francine, and mini, 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 down, mo, mo, ten. This is Jacob from Fresno. What's up, guys? So, uh, listen, I know this is silver and black today, not blue and gold today, but I just got done watching that Notre Dame season opener. And wow, we will, wow, 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 they are good. It's, it's going to be a great year. I just know it. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Even though I think we have the best defense in the nation, even though I think we've got four corners who could, you know, wind up being first round picks down the line somewhere, even though I think we've got, we've got a good thing on defense. The defense is looking pretty good. The offense, very slow, very slow coming out of the gates. And I just couldn't help but think. Of all the reports I was hearing this offseason from the Raiders, you know, and what we saw in the preseason, I guess it didn't so much line up, you know, that was a little inconsistent in the preseason. But all offseason we've been hearing 
Defense looks legit. Offense looks a little shaky. Quarterback looks a little shaky. It's the same kind of thing going on with Notre Dame. You know, they've got a quarterback who's, you know, just new at Notre Dame. He He's a journeyman, so to speak, coming from another team. And Gardner Minshew's a journeyman coming from another team. This guy can throw it. He can sling it. A little inconsistent, but he's mobile. And, you know, there's just so many tie-ins, man. I see the connections between the Raiders and the Irish. And, oh, I just say the look of the Irish. I feel like <laughs> they're going to put the silver and black on there this year. They got the look of the Irish going for them. So I think this week, this upcoming game, the Raiders are going to beat the Chargers by the same score, 23-13. to 13. I just think it's too new for Jim Harbaugh to come in and just start winning. You know, with no real receivers, with an offensive line that's good on the ends, but a little shaky on the inside, to my eye at least. A defense that's got two good edge guys. I'm not too good about, I'm not too sure about their secondary. I think that the Raiders are going to do this. They're going to control that game. They're going to be in control the whole time. Quarterbacks can come in and just put it away right at the end. All right, you guys, you take it easy and go Raiders. There you go. It's Jacob of Fresno after an absence from a couple shows. Thanks, man. We appreciate the call. I, he laid out his whole thought process this, there, Mo. This Raider Notre Dame love you and Jacob have going here. We need I to. Did, we need to. I did not tell him to talk about that, but you, he's you, smart. You, you definitely probably say, hey, Jacob, you know, add a little <laughs> Notre Dame flavor to your calls when you call Ooh. in. Just, just, for, just for old LV Gully, just, you know, hey, Notre God, Dame. Love. One of the greatest quarterbacks in Raiders history was from Notre Dame. So, hey, what are you going to do? But I, I'll say this about the Chargers Raiders matchup, and I said this back when the Chargers hired Harbaugh. We, we knew the schedule. Raiders Chargers matchups are going to be must see football if you're into hard nose, smash mouth, run the ball every inch counts type football. Because mm-hmm. both these teams, I think, especially early, are going to want to run the football. Now, the Raiders, you would hope that their offense develops so that they can utilize optimize the talents of Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, and Brock Bowers, and Michael Mayer on the outside. The Raiders clearly have more playmakers than the Chargers. But as I said in the first segment when we were picking our games for Bet US, that a lot of these first week games, the offense, a lot of the offenses aren't really in sync. So you want to pick yeah. a lot of unders because defenses usually come out of the gate. They're just blowing stuff up. The offenses are more choreographed and they have to get, you know, they have to get on the same page, especially if you, if you have a new quarterback or a new offensive coordinator. So I, I think I, I'm with Jacob that it could be a 2013 type game between these two teams. Again, a game of inches and yards uh, between their two run games and whichever team runs the ball a little better and makes, makes a play here or there, their pass game, the Raiders, uh, wins this football game. But I, I am expecting this Raiders Chargers game to be a good start to the season, not just if you're a Raiders fan, but just as you're, if you're a football fan and, and like that smash mouth play, I think you're going to get that in this Raiders Chargers game, though. I think it's going to be close. I agree with Jacob. The Raiders do pull it out. Absolutely. hundred percent. It's going to be fun to watch on Sunday. Whew. That's it for the show today. We went extra long, Mo. We're almost at 90 minutes of wholesome goodness Raider football with Mo Moten and Scott Branson. I mean, you can't beat that. Got to start the season off with a bang, you know. Gotta start the <laughs> first week of the it. season off with a bang. I love it. Now we're going to be back on Thursday for our show. Uh, Ryan Dyrud from LA Football Network. He's going to talk Chargers with us for a segment, and then we'll get into our game prediction and uh, which you already have as far as the win goes. But we'll give you some more details as we find out uh, who's active, who's coming, uh, who's not injured. You know, is Brock Bowers good to go? Is he playing? Is Jackson Powers John? What's going on with him? We'll find out this week with the official uh, uh, injury reports. Now the, the teams have to report them to the NFL. We'll, uh, we'll get some more details and understand where those guys are at. We'll see if our minds change at all between now and then. I don't think so, but you never know. So we'll do that. But Mo, also sitting here on Tuesday, tell everybody else what you got coming up this week between now and Friday. So Wednesday, tomorrow, I'll have a Bleacher Report live with a subject to be determined. I'll take your suggestions. Hit up my Twitter X handle, Momon, M-O-E-M-O-T-O-N. Give me your suggestions. I'll take those suggestions into consideration when I configure or design what the what the stream will be about. Of course, we'll, mm. we'll talk about the Chargers Raiders matchup, but just uh, any specific topics that you want to discuss, we'll talk about it. Uh, as I said, Dub Club, those plays will be out 
not just for the Raiders on Sunday, but for Thursday night football as well, for Friday football between the Green Bay Packers and the Eagles. And as Scott mentioned early in the show, I'll be back on Bleacher Report Sunday after the Raiders game, breaking down the win, the loss, who knows, maybe a tie between the two teams. Also, I want to remind you, Sports Not, I'll have a piece up there on Thursday. So I'm going back a few days because I just remembered I'm doing something different at Sports Not this year. I'm going to have my Raider roundtable discussion where I just give you my thoughts about the Raiders in any given week. So this week going into week one, I won't just talk about the Chargers matchup because I want to add a little flavor. Everyone does key matchups, key players. It's it's just dry and overrun. I want to do something different where I talk about some things that maybe other Raider analysts and writers aren't talking about. So it's called Raiders Roundtable. Depending on the week, this one be Raiders Roundtable Week 1, where I'll talk about a handful of topics that are around the Raiders into their matchup with the Chargers this Sunday. There you go. Hopefully you, uh, you will get all of that goodness. So make sure you do that. We'll be back on Thursday. Do us a favor. If you don't already subscribe to the show from the audio portion, make sure you do. Wherever you get your podcast, just look for Silver and Black today. Also, don't forget to rate and review the show wherever you listen. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hey, thanks for being with us <laughs> and for being active in the chat. As always, the, chat's great. I, the chat during the season, the chat post game. Mo, I know you can only drop in a couple times here and there during the season, but man, that chat in the post game is just crazy and fun. Uh, and, and we have such great viewers over on YouTube. It's fun to watch them go at it uh, and disagree, agree. And when things go well, how happy they are. And when things don't go well, the biting comments they have, it's, it's all good fun. And we're there. It's time for football season. So we'll do that. But anyway, we'll be back on Thursday. So we appreciate you guys being with us. Mo, take care, my friend. Take care, Scott. Talk to you soon. All right. For our producer at Odyssey, Mike Robier, I'm Scott Cobranson from Momotin. We will see everybody and talk to you guys on Thursday. Take care, Raider Nation.